all of a sudden woke up and it felt like something was stuck behind my eye. And it was like something was scratching me. I couldn't, every time I blinked, it would hurt. Mm. I would try to go to sleep at night. And as soon as my eyes would start to shift and I would enter REM sleep and, you know, they kind of twitch, it would scratch and it would hurt. And I couldn't sleep for almost three, I think it was three nights straight. And my birthday was on the 12th. I had taken off a few days before then. And I realized I'm not going to be able to enjoy my birthday party. I can't sleep like... And I'm afraid of the eye doctor. (laughs) So I haven't been to the eye doctor in a really long time or I hadn't been. And the universe basically was forcing me on the last day of being 27 to go to the eye doctor. There was something there that I needed to do. I needed her to check my eye. So I went and she's like, I'm so sorry that you're suffering, but there's nothing in your eye. And I don't know if it's an allergic reaction. I don't know if it's scratching your cornea and it's healing so quickly when you blink that I just can't see it. But I don't know what to tell you. Like, try these eye drops and <laughs> just just go home. Um, and so my birthday was um, the next day. And because I was a little sleep deprived, I started to think about things differently. Like, you know, when you're fed up and you hit yes. that wall and you're like, oh, if I could just have sleep, if I could just have my eye better, I would, I would just appreciate life so much more. Yes. I appreciate my eyes now. I appreciate things like my perspective and my vision. You're like, God, I get the lesson. Now let's have it be over. I always do that. I'm like, got it, God. Uh, let's move on. <laughs> exactly. I'm like, okay. And I thought I got the lesson, yes. but not yet. And so I was just so fed up with all of this. And Nick had created this beautiful birthday party for me. He had rented this boat and all of my friends were coming and we were going to do this extravagant party. And I just woke up on my birthday and was like, none of this matters. Like, I don't need a boat. I'm not that special. I'm not that important. Like, I just want to be happy and around the people I love on my 28th birthday. So I started to have mm. this like self-awareness like this let's be like less selfish or like let's be less uh it's all about me you know and as a leo it's just kind of like my nature Mm -hmm. i had a great birthday went to bed that night i was still killing me i was like no way i'm gonna go on a fourth night of two hours of sleep and in the middle of the night i was in a twilight state and i just heard i guess a thought in my head that said that man over there can help you with your eye And I turned around again. I don't know if I was awake or dreaming, but I turned around and I saw my grandfather standing next to my bed. And I had never met my grandfather. He passed before I was born, Um, but I've seen pictures of him, a few here and there. And uh, he was in a gray suit. It was oversized. He was like very gaunt, like his cheekbones were popping out. He had a black hat on. He was very short and I didn't know what his height was. And I asked my dad, he's like, yeah, he used to wear a gray suit. He was short. And I said, Grandpa Joe, can you help me with my eye? Can you help me, please? Can you help me? Wait, were you not scared? No, I, no, not at all. Oh. I had such an odd sense of peace. It was like a, an out-of-body yeah. birthday yeah. experience. <laughs> like, <Wow. laughs> and I said, please help me with my eye. And I, I like turned around, got really cozy, and like tried to settle back in. And I just felt as if something was like pulled out of my eye, like from out of my head. And all of a sudden, the feeling was just gone. And I, I didn't understand what it meant at first. I thought it was amazing. I called my uncle. I called my dad. And they're like, well, <laughs> kind of like say a prayer and thank him. Yeah. But that weekend, I ended up going to memorial for my uncle who passed last year. We couldn't hold a service for him. So we gathered this year. And I walked in. And I, my grandfather's side of the family, who I had never met before, was standing there. They were like, Olivia, we haven't seen you since you were an infant. And all of a sudden, I, I spent that whole day learning about my grandfather and my grandfather's side and all of these family members that I've lost connection with that, you know, I, I realized it's really just me and my cousin and we we're, our family is so disconnected and we've lost our roots. And where is he from in Italy? Where where am I from? And I, I started to just think outside of myself, think about my family and realize that it's not just me and it's not just about me. There's all of these other people. And I think in terms of COVID and and what happened with my parents, because my parents got very ill during COVID. um, That was my first realization. It was like the day my Saturn return started. It was like when they got sick. That was my first realization of how Mm. disconnected my immediate family was. And we did a lot of work there. But then this was like my extended. And I just, again, started to see outside of myself. It's not about me. It's there's all this family here. And I went home that night and I researched the town that he's from. I started researching my culture more and I started to map out my family tree and and saw how many people there are. And 
realize that when you lose sight of family and, and you think it's just about you, you do get selfish more easily. You are more self-centered. And I just started to see myself differently. Mm-hmm. Then I went back to the eye doctor, got my eyes actually checked just because I was like, all right, I, I already did it once. Let's do it. And I went to a behavioral optometrist, which is a totally, de- it's, it's still a doctor, but um, it's a developing part of the science. It's a niche. And um, she kind of explains how your eyesight, and we just interviewed her for our podcast, she explains how um, your eyesight and the way that you see and the specific vision issues that you have shape your personality and the way that you move through the world and the way that you treat others and just your perception. And I found out that I can see pretty well up close, but I can't really see far away. And I found out that Nick, my fiance, can see really well far away, but can't see really well up close. Nearsighted and farsighted, right? Mm. Yes, exactly. Yes. I always get the two mm-hmm. confused. That's me, honey. <laughs> mm-hmm. So I don't know which is which, though. A nearsighted, it's, it's exactly. like opposite. It's like if you are nearsighted, you can see up close, yeah. right? Yes, yeah, so it's like opposite. Yeah. Something Who knows? Weird. Someone write That's in. That's why I'm like, I'm just gonna explain it because yes. I know I'll butcher yes. this. <laughs> So she's like, you know, people who can see well up close and can't see far, you tend to focus on these details. You're very type A. You don't love when things don't go your way or they're not in order. And you sometimes can't see the big picture. Or, you know, I kind of took it as sometimes you can't see others' needs, but you can see your own and you can see your to-do list. And that's Mm. very much how I am. Whereas Nick, you guys know, my fiance, he's an actual earth angel. I don't know where he came from. He's always thinking about the big picture, the harmony, the whole, everyone around him, creating a cohesive, loving environment, isn't thinking about himself enough sometimes and can't really focus on that to-do list or those tasks in front of him because he's like, do these matter? There's all of this out there. There's space. We haven't explored the ocean. I want to know why that tree grows like that. I want to know why this person's not feeling well. Like He's so out there and I'm so right here. And we work so well together because of that. But at the same time, there's balance to be had on both sides. And so, again, that was another piece of the puzzle where I started to think about myself and my behavior and how I am and started to see things more clearly after my grandfather, like, cleared my vision or whatever happened. Um, And so then I, for the first time in my life, took a substantial dose of psilocybin mushrooms. A few days later, I I was reading these books. I was getting all these insights. More and more was resonating. Mm. I picked up this book called What Are You Doing With Your Life by Krishnamurti, and I recommend it to everyone that I meet. And it was talking about this very thing, self-awareness, self-knowledge, understanding your own behavior, what love really is, and how you must remove yourself and expectations and What can I get in return? Can I get acknowledgement if you want to exhibit true love? So, um, yeah, I I did these mushrooms and I sat there with Nick and we started speaking about our vision and our vision differences. Did he do them as well? He did them with me, yes. Yeah, and um, yeah, he did. So... (laughs) I thought he was just like kind of supporting. <laughs> well, no, I he had taken them a few years ago in Amsterdam with my two best girlfriends, and I was wow. I didn't take them, and I was facilitating them, mm-hmm. and it was such a magical experience to be a facilitator. And so in this experience, he took less than me so that he could facilitate me, but he still wanted to be in that open hearted mm. mode and moment. And so yeah, he uh, we're talking about vision, and I'm like, wait, why? Why do you care so much about things that are out there? Why do you love outer space so much? He loves astronomy. Same with my, mm. yep. Yes. And the pyramids. Yes. Sacred geometry, outer mm-hmm. space, the pyramids. Exactly. And yeah. I'm like, wow, you spend so much time thinking mm-hmm. about what's up there and staying curious about it. I'm like, how when there, we're, there's so much to do on this rock right here. I have a to-do list. You're like, have you seen my slack? <laughs> <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly goes back to the slack, right? And all of this, I have to do this, me, me, me. And he's like, if you don't take interest in what's up there, you'll never know yourself. And he's it just explained. And I, and I looked at him and I'm like, oh, I could take more of an interest in you too. Why don't I ask you about your love for space more often? Why don't I listen more when you want to show me a, a YouTube video about astronomy? Why am I like so mm. into my own needs and my to-do list? And why do I think that's any more important than anyone else? And... I connected it to the vision and I just looked at him. I said, I'm a little self-centered, aren't I? And he said, yeah. Oh. Mm. <laughs> and he said, I, I couldn't tell you that. You had to see it and it's okay. 
And it was the most loving moment. And, and like, and you know, when you have psilocybin mushrooms in your system, there's no judgment because there's just truth. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, yes. you just have a deep understanding that this is just the way it is and it's okay because now you see the truth and that's great. And so I wasn't beating myself up for it. It was just pure acceptance and exploration. And, it, and he's like, you know, can I say a few things to you without offending you? And I'm like, absolutely. And so we just had this conversation and he's like, you know, it's a trend in a sense in your family. You guys are very type A, you are very similar. And, and yeah, you don't really see about outside of yourself sometimes. And I saw that reflected in my family tree. I was thinking about that tree that I mapped. I'm like, wow, we don't stay connected with these people. We, oh my goodness. And yeah, we just had this moment and he's just like, he brought up me not watching his show. You know, those little things in relationships that really matter. And I just started bawling and I was like, I'm so sorry. I can see it now. Mm -hmm. And I just had this moment of pure self-awareness and... <laughs> it was like my eyes were fully open to my mm. own behavior. And I just kept saying like, I really, I really display poor behavior sometimes. And I, I'm going to change it because it's like, it's in my vision now. And I just was blind before. And not that I'm a bad person. Like I spoke to my therapist about it and she's like, remember that this is why you can be successful. You have that you can, you can lock in like a pit and just get your stuff done and shut out the world. There are pros and cons to everything. And don't think he's not selfish too. We're human. And I said, I know it's, it's fine, but I can be better. Thank you so much for tuning in to Morning Microdose by Almost 30. We hope you enjoyed waking up. As always, we encourage you to take what resonates and leave the rest. If you enjoyed this trip, tune into the full episode on the Almost 30 podcast. All episode information can be found in the show notes. Make sure to subscribe. And if this becomes a part of your morning routine, be sure to share it with a friend. We have new inspiring doses Monday through Friday. Follow us on Instagram at Morning Microdose and follow Almost 30 at Almost 30 Podcast. Thanks for listening. We'll see you in the vortex.